Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I'm Andy Signor, and I've been celebrating the five-year anniversary of Screen Junkies Plus and its ultimate failure. Uh, and to do that, I've been doing a bunch of videos about it. If you want to see part one uh, to really answer why it failed, uh, you can click on up there to see the playlist and all the other videos I'm putting out there about this topic. Uh, but I got so many questions from you guys, and I wanted to answer them all, particularly about the two biggest titans we secured for Screen Junkies Plus. Of course, I'm talking about Chris Stuckman, and Jeremy Johns, uh, both of which still massively successful in the YouTube space. Uh, two critics I still look up to and admire. Uh, we were able to get both of them to create exclusive shows for Screen Junkies Plus. So how do we do that? Were they successful? Was there a rivalry between those two? Was there any drama? I'm going to bring all that to you right here in this installment of this series. Now, before I get to that, though, I got to go through some of my script here. I'm going to go through some of my bullet points to sort of really get you through all of the history of this story. Now, for those of you who are like, what is Screen Junkies Plus? Uh, well, this was a paid streaming service that we made for Screen Junkies uh, five years ago. Uh, and my exact role in it was to figure out the programming. While we focused on a lot of internal shows for our talent in-house, like Movie Fights Live, et cetera, which I'll get into, we really knew that in order to actually succeed on this platform, we would need to get some of our popular movie-loving friends to create shows as well. That's why we went after How It Should Have Ended, eventually The Flick Pick, Jeremy, Chris, etc., Andre Meadows, Black Nerd. Uh, we, we did this to solve one of our biggest problems that I talked about in part one, which was how to let people know that this service existed and how to find other movie fans out there to potentially sign up. So we attempted to create two original programs for two of the biggest YouTube pundits out there, Jeremy Johns and Chris Stuckman. Funny side story before I get into all of them. I, I want to share this because someone actually asked a question and it brought this up. Christian and Mark from Schmoes Know, which if you know these people, you'll know who they are as well. They're now part of the Schmo Down. Uh, and uh, they were actually not on board at the time. But Christian at the time called me and just felt left out. He's like, why are Jeremy's Chris? Well, why can we do something? Why, why aren't we doing something? And the reality was... My bosses didn't care about them. and They didn't really want them there. But being the good friend that I was at the time, uh, I figured out a way to get them involved and put them in the press release. I thought, oh, we'll figure out and develop something with them eventually. I'm happy to do that. I'm, I'm friendly with them. I'm happy with them. I know some of our fans are mutual. Let's give them something to do as well. I had no problem with it. Uh, but what was interesting was then eventually it didn't work out because I, I believe it was Christian and Mark's collider contract eventually precluded them from doing any sort of other stuff. And we needed them to be able to exclusively promote our service. Uh, and that made things more complicated but I, I point that out and I wanted to make sure I put there because I, I saw Christian out there saying some things sort of knocking the service of like well why would anyone want a bunch of podcasts etc just funny to me because he totally wanted to be a part of it uh, and he also totally got to take advantage of this every time we flew out Chris or Jeremy we always made sure we left time for them to go show up on Collider or Schmodown uh, so it's just frustrating to see him sort of knock the effort uh, we did our best to include them and no reason for him to knock it. Uh, but getting back to Chris Stuckman and Jeremy Johns, uh, we approached them and some others, uh, and we did pay them. Not a lot, but also not a little. Probably could have paid them more, to be fair, but we weren't really making any money yet, so that's why we didn't. But we also offered them a little bit of cash, so when they talked to their subscribers about Screen Junkies Plus, they could get a little extra. This is called affiliate marketing. So basically you entice another channel to offer your service, and that way if anybody uses sort of the key code or link that you provide, you get a piece of every subscriber that they bring in. It's a common way to do marketing online. We offered that to them, hoping that would help bring in subscribers. Ultimately, it didn't, uh, and ultimately, I just think they didn't really care. The, the reward wasn't worth the promotion on either Chris or Jeremy's part, and I don't knock them for it, but it's something that we thought would be more successful. It sadly wasn't. Now, ultimately, I think just the bosses realized they needed to put Screen Junkies Plus billboards out on every channel they could, especially relevant movie channels, and that's how they saw Chris and Jeremy, and I think everybody sort of knew that was what we were doing, uh, but I think we just sort of thought that it was going to be more successful and that they would be more excited to be promoting it and getting their affiliate marketing fees uh, but ultimately just it didn't work out in the end because it wasn't really worth it for them uh, and this was tremendously short-sighted of us because if talent doesn't like the shows they're doing or the experience they're a part of then why would their audience want to watch it either now, all that backstory was important to get out in order to talk about Chris Stuckman and Jeremy Johns' shows. Uh, their deal was even more complicated because uh, the company at the time uh, complicated the Screen Junkies Plus talent deal by also signing them into an MCN network. Now, at the time, I didn't think it was a big deal. However, later, after I was fired, when the company got shut down, it got in a lot of public trouble from channels like Chris for their shady MCN dealings. I have a lot of thoughts on that whole deal, but... 
I'm going to save that for a future video because I want to stay on the topic of Chris and Jeremy and Screen Junkies Plus. Now, it made sense for me at the time for them to join the MCN multi-channel network as it's called uh, because they were gonna get a lot more perks from YouTube. Uh, you can get parts of uh, bigger advertising deals if you're part of a bigger company. You also get less copyright strikes and that was something immensely important to Jeremy and Chris. Uh, and I made sure that they got into the network at a 0% pass through which is the best you can do which means the company takes zero uh, fees from those giving you those perks that I just talked about. Uh, but I also made a point to separate myself from that part of the deal making. I, I didn't want to be part of the, the network deal. I just wanted to make sure I was part of the talent and the creative show uh, that they were part of. But things got complicated because those two contracts were one and the same. And I think ultimately that created some conflict for Chris and Jeremy. Now, my main task was programming and also relationship with the talent. And in regards to Chris and Jeremy, I got no tea to spill here. There was no drama. There was no rivalry. They were amazing to work with. If anything, I owe them apologies. I feel bad for putting them in the contract that eventually became more complicated in the MCN later. Uh, and I also feel like I was constantly pressuring them to sort of deliver on parts of the contract that they didn't really want to. And reality is they were amazing to work with. They did what they were told. They tried their best to make those shows work. But I think neither of them really liked doing their shows. And honestly, I don't blame them. Uh, we planned to fly them out every six months or so to bank a bunch of those shows that they worked on. Uh, we struggled with a good idea for Chris, but ultimately settled on first and worst. It was a simple podcast show uh, where he had a guest on, and then they would choose a celebrity to debate what was the best and worst movie for each celebrity. Uh, first and worst was fine, uh, but also nothing that would drive over Stuckman fans in droves, and that was ultimately the problem. I think it just became kind of a boring show to do over and over again, and it wasn't a view driver. Now, Jeremy's show, Movie Games, was a whole nother story. I loved movie games. I loved Jeremy as a host. And Jeremy always had a blast taping those episodes. Now, I don't think I'm speaking too out of turn to acknowledge that Jeremy prefers to edit and prep his content. He also hates traveling, especially to Los Angeles. So I think all of that put him in as an odd fit for host. Uh, it just didn't showcase his strengths, uh, which is showcasing his wonderful movie punditry and knowledge and criticism. Uh, instead, we put him in as this jolly host, uh, which I enjoyed that format, and I think it could have done well as a public show with a you know adjusted format and maybe even a different host. Uh, but it just it was not a format to drive Jeremy John's fans. Uh, the travel and long shoots, just they took a toll on him, and I don't blame him at all for that. Uh, and ultimately, I think both Chris and Jeremy just lost interest in doing the shows. They had other stuff they were doing. The return wasn't worth it. Uh, and at the time, uh, that annoyed me. And so I, I'm sure I put some pressure on, come on, we got to tape more, and come on, help us out. And in hindsight, looking back, they were right. And I wish I hadn't been so hard on them because, look, I was doing my job. I was being you know, whip from the top as well. Why aren't they going? Why aren't they going? And I felt like they didn't want to be a part of it, but they just didn't have the best shows. We didn't really give them the best shows. And that was on us. They were delivering what we gave them, uh, but their shows also just weren't performing as big as we'd hoped. And that's not to diss them in the slightest. That's on me. I made, sort of boring shows that didn't really showcase them as talent. Look, I wish I could have done things differently. And if I could, I would have made a John's Stuckman podcast, a uh, Siskel and Ebert type show where they could phone in from where they lived, no travel, and talk about the films that they each reviewed that week. Seeing them sort of go head to head and talk about it would have been a fascinating show that I think both fans would have enjoyed watching them sort of bicker or agree or talk about the love of movies. Uh, and it would have been something they wouldn't have to prepare too much for because they would have already done it the week prior. And I think as simple as that show sounds, it would have been a huge, much bigger draw for both Jeremy fans and Chris Stuckman fans. Uh, that would have brought in subscribers for each of them. It would have cost less. It would have avoided travel. And I think it was, could have been a weekly commitment that hopefully they had done for a price. Uh, and I wish we could have done that one instead. But we felt the pressure to sort of put them each in their own shows so we could have the Stuckman show and the Jeremy John show and ultimately... That was a short-sighted goal. We shouldn't have done that. We should have we should have teamed them up because I think together that would have been even something better that you couldn't have got anywhere else. And that was pretty much it on Chris and Jeremy. There was one week where we had them both there at the same time because we were doing photo shoots of everybody, uh, and we got them to appear on some of the shows on Plus, and we got them they appeared on Collider and elsewhere, and we tried to get them on Movie Fights, etc. We always tried to tap them into other programs when they came to visit, as well as bank a huge amount of their shows, which took a toll on them. Uh, ultimately, I am so grateful for the work they did. I remain huge fans of both of them. I know they're both doing extremely well. Again, I wish them the best. I have no ill will towards them. Uh, thank you both for doing it. Guys, they are both awesome guys who just do what they do and they do it best. 
I got so much to talk about, including Kevin Smith's What's in the Box? How do we get him? And why is the show currently on YouTube? There's so much to talk about, including Does It Hold Up? Movie Fights Live and lots more. But before I do that, thank you to all you Screen Junkies Plus subscribers out there. Thank you for joining. Maybe you can consider joining this channel, Popcorn Planet's where it's at. If you can't join, at least hit that subscribe, hit all alerts, then smash that like button, leave a comment for best engagement, and support this channel as I regrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on Popcorn Planet. In fact, click that box on the left. It'll have all the Screen Junkies Plus content straight for you. Thanks for watching, everybody.